आर वॉचिंग हाई डेफिनेशन ब्रॉडकास्टिंग गॉस्पल सवाल बंदे क्रिश्चियन मूवीज मैसेज तकाजे भी हम देख रहे हैं कि यसुमसी का सलीब पर जान देना चिल्ड्रन प्रोग्राम दो एहतिकात अगर खुदावंद ही खुदा है एट ब्राइट स्टार टीवी नजात का पेगा Star TV presents all the Christian programs like Urdu gospel songs Punjabi gospel songs English gospel songs dramas movies discussions reality shows messages true sets sunday school programs and many more keep watching bright star tv a surprise that when as Christians as believers in God we go through difficult times and times may be challenging but we have to keep our faith in God and we can be in many different seasons in our life but it's important for us to to stand still to to be silent to listen to God and to to keep our faith to be strong and not to waver um i wanted to give a brief testimony and talk about how for me myself in my walk with God in with my walk in the christian life it can be very difficult the road can be very narrow and at times sometimes it gets really tough and you might feel like you want to throw in the towel you want to give up but don't give up stay your course because god is a mighty god and he has a plan for us and so with that being said tonight we are going to pray that we just don't give up we don't give up in this race that no matter what's going on in our lives no matter what's going on in our seasons no matter what our friends are telling us what our families are telling us no matter how our finances are no matter what job we have no matter what kind of relationship we're in we are going to stay true to god we are going to continue to put god first and we're not going to give up so tonight we're just going to pray that we can continue to stay strong in the lord so just say father god please i want to stay strong in you no matter what comes in my way i want to stay my course no matter what comes in my way father god i want to stay true to you because i know that your promises are true oh lord Father God, I know that you are true. I I've seen what you can do in my life, and I want to continue to give you all the glory and all the praise and all the thanks even when things get difficult, even when things around me don't look good, even when things around me aren't the best, even if my season isn't completely the best I've seen, I'm going to stay strong. I'm going to stay bold and the Holy Spirit, let's pray that prayer. I will continue to stay bold in you. I will continue to stay strengthened in you. 
I will not be wavered. I would trust in you, the Lord, because your promises stand true, O Lord. I will show up for you like you show up for me. I will show up for you like you show up for me. It doesn't matter what my surroundings look like. It doesn't matter how things look or seem to be. I trust in you because I believe you have a plan for me in my life. Oh, Father God, I will never give up. Oh, Jesus, I will stand by you 100%. I will stand you by you by you 150%. It's not about how I feel. It is about what the word of God says. I will not give up. I will not waver. Even when things seem hard around me, I will not give in to the temptations of the world. I will not focus on the things around me. I will have endurance. I will have endurance to reach my destination, to reach your will for me in my life, oh Lord. Come on, tell him I won't give up when things get hard. Oh Lord, I'm 100% in for you, oh Jesus. I'm 110% in for you. Even when things get tough, I'm going to stay in the race. I'm going to keep pushing through. I'm going to keep fighting through no matter how difficult things are. I'm going to keep fighting through. I'm going to stay my course because I trust in you, O Lord, because I believe in you, O Lord, because I know what you've done for me, Father God, and I know that you will continue to do that. I will continue to keep my faith in you, O Lord. Ask God to increase your faith, O Lord. Increase my faith, O Lord. Increase my endurance, O Lord. O Father God, search my soul, O Lord. Teach me your ways, Jesus. I want to continue to go strong in my season, O oh Lord. Reveal to me what it is that I need to see so that I can be successful, O oh Lord. And this walk, this walk is not always easy, God, but you make it easier because we depend on you, Father God, because you are a provider. It's not about what my friends say, O oh Lord. It's not about what family members say, O oh Lord. It's not about what my finances say. It's not about what my relationships say, O oh Lord. It's not about the weather, oh Lord. It's not about if I walk or if I have a car, oh Lord. It's not if I take the bus or I have a car, oh Lord. It's because I have two feet, Father God. Two feet that you've given me to do your will, oh Jesus. It doesn't matter if there's 50 people cheering me on to do the work of the Lord or if there's one person. I know that I have to fulfill my mission, Father God. I know that I you have a plan for me and I have to fulfill that plan. I have to fulfill that mission. It's not what people say. It's not what the environment says. It's not what the forecast says. It's not what the news says. It's what you say, Father God, because I believe in you, oh Jesus, because you have a plan. I will not be wavered. Come on, pray that you will not give up. When times get tough, you will stay your course. Come on, I will not waver. I will not be moved. I will not be shaken. I will not be shaken. I will stay my course. I will be strong in the Lord every second of the way until the trumpet blows. Yes, until Father God comes down through those clouds, I will stay my course until the trumpet sounds. No matter what happens, I know I'm not perfect, but I know I will continue to stay my course and do the best that I can in this race. I will learn more about Jesus. I will learn to understand him more. I will show up for church services. I will be here every step of the way, even if I don't feel like it, because I know the Lord has a plan for me. I know the Lord has great plans for me. I've seen what he's did in my life. Oh Lord, come on, just praise him right now and just thank him. No matter what season you're going through right now, say, Lord, I still praise you. Even if times are tough right now, I still praise you. Even if times are challenging, I still praise you. Even if my bank account is low, I still praise you. Even if I'm still looking for a job and I haven't found one, Lord, I still praise you because you have a plan, oh Lord. Even if my car is not the best car, I still praise you, oh Lord. I still thank you that I'm able to get from point A to point B, from point A to point B, Father God, because you provide it, oh Lord, because you know more than me. I don't know more than you, oh Lord. You are the creator. You are bigger than all things. You know more than me. I could never think at your level, Father God. I can continue to try, but you know what's best for me, and you have my best interests. Just like Pastor was saying yesterday, oh Lord, you have my best interest. I trust you. I trust that you know my best interest, Father God, and that you're going to do whatever you need to do in my life for me to move forward. I will not give up. I will not waver. I will stand still. I will stand strong. I will not be moved. No matter what people say, no matter what my surroundings say, I will stay straight on you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. God is good. The anointing is here today. Hallelujah. And we're getting ready for the understanding the mystery of the angels. And Sister Alyssa is going to come up today and give us some testimonies. Hallelujah. Hello. Let's do a quick prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the opportunity and privilege to get here and be in your house with your people, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the healing moments, the move that you are doing. We expect more miracles and more favor and blessing concerning this um, ministry that you have, Father God, because we know that you are doing mighty things for people who need it for your glory and your kingdom to advance, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, for the power that you have and the authority that you have given us to continue the healing moments, Father God. And we pray blessings and favor over this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus fulfills Abigail with the Holy Spirit. Greetings to you, Apostle Jima. Since my encounter with the Healing Moments broadcast aired on Restoration FM some months ago, I have had a greater understanding of what it means to have faith with the Lord. I want to emphasize that my experience is personal to me. What I've gone through has created a path for endless possibilities for me. It has an easy journey. It wasn't an easy journey. There were times that I fell short of the glory of God, but Jesus Christ was always there to lift me up again. My experience with God happened some time ago in February 2024. Before then, I thought speaking in tongues was only for pastors and apostles. That evening in February, I was listening to the broadcast in which you were praying about speaking in tongues. Immediately, I felt a strange force surrounding my room. I found myself standing up saying things that I could not understand. Behold, I was speaking in tongues, proclaiming and praying in tongues which lasted for about 30 minutes. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I felt like my body was made whole in Christ. I am saved, and Jesus himself was chosen me to serve him. After the powerful encounter that I had that night, my spiritual life started manifesting and changing completely in me. It was my first experience with God and speaking in tongues. Abigail Jackson, March 26, 2024. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We serve a faithful God. That's our friend. He's our friend. How many know that he's our friend? He's our friend. And we thank him for being our friend. Thank you, Jesus, for being our friend. That your promises are true. That even if we fail, you never fail. We give you praise, Jesus. We give you honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father God, I surrender my heart to you tonight. I give you all the praise and I thank you for being my friend. Even when I didn't have a friend. Even when nobody was there, you were there, Jesus. You never left me. I call you faithful for the promises you kept and every need you've met. Lord, I'm so grateful. You were with me every step and I never will forget when I think of how you blessed me, how your hand has never let me go, never let me go. You have been so good to me. God, I can't believe how you love me. What a friend you have been so good to me oh god i can't believe how you love me what a friend you have been anybody have a friend in jesus I call you Savior, 
for the blood that washed me clean, for the wrongs that you redeemed. Lord, I'm so grateful. You are with me every step. And I never will forget, because when I think of how you bless me, how your hand has never let me go, never let me go, you have been so good to me. Oh God, I can't believe how you love me. What a friend you have been, so good to me. Oh God, I can't believe how you love me. What a friend you have been. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, that you're a provider. We thank you, Jesus, that you're always here for us. We thank you, Jesus, that you never leave us, that you're our friend. You're our best friend. You're our first love. You never left us and you never will. You never left us and you never will. Thank you, Jesus. For every morning, for every open door, I call you faithful and I just want to thank you, Lord. For every mountain, for every time you brought me through, I call you faithful, and I just want to thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, for how you never turned away. I call you faithful, and I just want to thank you, Lord, for your salvation. You pay the price I couldn't pay. I call you faithful, and I just want to thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise him. Give him glory. Say, thank you, Jesus, that you're my friend. You've never left me. I thank you for your redemption. I thank you for your sacrifices. I thank you for everything you've done. Even things that I didn't know about, I thank you for. Even things that you did when I didn't know about. Even things that you did that I didn't know about, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, because you have been so good to me say it oh god i can't believe sing it how you loved me say what a friend have you been what a friend you have been sing it glorify him so good to me tell him i can't believe it god i can't believe how you love me what a friend you have been so good to me tell him oh god i can't believe how you love me what a friend you have been so good to me oh god i can't believe how you love me what a friend you have been Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I thank you for every mountain, oh Lord. I thank you for every mountain you move. And I just want to thank you. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for what you're about to do in this service today for the ministry of the angels. We pray your angels surround this room tonight as we glorify you. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. My God, glory to Jesus. Thank God for his mercies. What a good song. God is good. He is always good. Welcome to the school of the Holy Spirit. Glad to have you with us here tonight. And the testimony we, we received from that one of our listener in Healing Moments radio program about being baptized in the Holy Spirit reminds me of what I, I learned occurred from a university in Pennsylvania. They did a research on speaking in tongues in the University of Pennsylvania. And they put some machine on the 
frontal lobe of somebody who was speaking regular English, they found that the frontal lobe was active, was active while they were speaking English. Once they switched to tongues, the frontal lobe became idle. Frontal lobe became calm. They found that, wow, but when you speak in tongues, your brain, frontal lobe has to do with your brain. Your mind is involved. When you speak in tongues, your mind is not involved, but your spirit is involved. So when you speak in tongues, your brain, your mind is activated. And when you speak in tongues, you flip the switch, as it were, from your mind to your spirit. That's why Paul says, when I speak in tongues, my mind prayeth. He said, but when I speak, so when I speak in my understanding, my mind is involved. But when I speak in tongues, he said, my mind is not involved. It's a spiritual communication verified by medical science. Verified. God is perfect. I mean, verified by science. Oh, I you did the studies many years ago or so. They discovered from those studies that those who speak in tongues often for a long time have higher immune system in their physical body. So wow, this is medical science, medical science. So when God, when God gives us experiences and blessings, God means business. God's not playing around. When he tells us about speaking in tongues, God means it's a blessing to us. Not just in the spirit, but even in the physical. It's good that uh, medical science is trying to catch up with God with what God has already revealed to us. Welcome to the School of the Holy Spirit. I trust God to minister to us today. Say amen to that. Thank God for bringing you into this service today. Your coming here is not by accident and it's not a mistake. The Lord brought you here for a reason. You will do something unique in your life today. Let's express our faith to the Lord right now. The Bible says in Hebrews that the word of God was preached to them, but the word didn't profit them because they didn't mix it with faith. In other words, the word of God is sent to us for our profiting. So when you hear the word of God, you ought to get better. When you hear God's word, there should be a plus to your life. God's word never minuses but adds to our lives. But our faith is a key to unplug that plus. So bow your heads, please, and say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, speak to me today. I mix my faith with your word. I apply my faith to your word. Speak to me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, wonderful Holy Spirit, for this service. This is your service. This is your school. You have brought us here today to be taught by you and to be touched by you. Now, in the name of Jesus, my Christ, I ask you to take over this service from me and move among us today. Speak to our spirits, touch our lives. In dimensions, we will never be the same again. Give us entrance to the realms of God. Let there be an open door for us now into your realms, the dimensions of the Almighty. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, help us to go beyond where we are now to the dimensions of the Almighty God. In the spirit realm, give us perceptions, understandings, clarity to hear the voice of the Holy Ghost. Spirit of God, Speak to our lives. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our hearts to understand. To the glory of the Lord Jesus. Breathe upon us, Holy One, Holy Spirit. Breathe on us. Holy Spirit, breathe on us. Me last day, Bethlehem in the UK. 
Beko Shelly Vika Emplos Ferry Day Open to us right now in the realms of God in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Open our eyes to behold your glory. Give us access to the realms beyond the physical to the realms of Almighty God today, that everyone here will receive from you and be changed by your power. And we vow to give you the praise and glory for it, Father. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. Praise God. Understanding the ministry of angels. The ministry of angels. There are two worlds or two realms of existence. There are two worlds, two realms of existence. There is the physical, tangible, touchable realm, which we all are conversant with. We can touch, we can see, we can hear in the physical plane. This is the, this is the real world. We all know that. This real world. You are actually in this building. You are here in this building. You are not fantasizing. It's a real place. You are sitting on a real chair right now. It's real. It's physical. You are here in a, with real people. We are not uh, spirits, as it were. We are physical. You are seeing us. We are in a real physical place. So this is the first dimension of existence that we all know is the physical world. Alongside with that is the spiritual world, is the invisible world, is the world of spirits, is the unseen realm. The unseen realm is very, very real, even though it's unseen. We can see it in the physical, we can't touch it, but it is very, very real. You know, in the natural world, some people undermine the spiritual world. They think, well, well, uh, all there is to life is what my eyes can see, what my hands can touch. That's all there is to life. So if I die, that's it. Oh, that is nothing but ignorance come to see. The spiritual realm is extremely real. In fact, the spiritual world is more real than the physical world. Why? Because the physical world is the parent of the... So the spiritual world is the parent of the physical world. The spiritual world brought the physical world into existence. The physical world is like a pupet before the spiritual world the spiritual world is what determines what happens in the physical world when you see things happen in your life or in around you or in society in your community in your family in the nation these things that happen in the physical realm they are being orchestrated from the spiritual world whether we know it or not that's the fact of the matter Everything happening in the physical realm, whether it's in your personal life or it's in your finances or it's in your health or it's in relationship with people or it's in your family or it's in your community or it's in your environment. Everything you are seeing on the physical plane is being done by the spiritual world. It's the spiritual world that determines what happens in the physical world. And we don't know that. We don't know that. We will not be able to understand the need to be, get conversant with the spiritual world, the spiritual world. So the spiritual world is very, very real. It's very real. It's so real that if we undermine it, we won't be able to understand what happens in the physical world because the spiritual world is what regulates what happens in the physical world. I want to say this over and over again until we, we get it deep into our spirit that the physical world is at the mercy of the spiritual world. 
the physical world is at the mercy of the spiritual world. The, the spiritual, the physical world is nothing minus the spiritual. Because the spiritual realm brought the physical world into being. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. God, who is the spirit, made the physical world. So the physical world is, is a baby of the spiritual world. The spiritual world. Glory be to God. That's a fact. And the spiritual world is divided into two dimensions, into two realms. It's in two realms. The first realm of the spiritual world is God's realm. The other realm is the devil's realm, the spiritual realm. So the spiritual world, though it's invisible, I said it's very real, and it's actually superimposed upon the physical world. The spiritual world is superimposed upon the physical world because it's in a different dimension altogether. In the spiritual world, we have two divisions, the realms of God and the realms of the devil. That's why we are told that God is a spirit. Because the spiritual realm is a realm of spirits. John 4 verse 24. John chapter 4 verse 24. This is what Jesus said. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus said, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. So God is a spirit who has his dimension in the spiritual world. Not only is God a spirit, he said, they, those who worship this God must do so in spirit and in truth. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9, we see again about God. Hebrews 12, verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh. Hebrews 12, 9, which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not rather be subjection unto the father of spirits? and leave so in hebrews 12 verse 9 paul is saying to us that our earthly fathers were the fathers of our flesh did you observe that he says the fathers of our flesh so my me i'm the father of my children's flesh not of their spirits but of their flesh so my earthly father was the father is late now was the father of my flesh not of my spirit but God is the father of spirits. That verse says, Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? Being in subjection to the father of spirits is what enabled us to live spiritually. That's the key word. God, who is a spirit, is the father of spirits. Everyone who is subjected to the Father is the one who actually lives. So, anyone who does not subject his spirit to God the Father, that person dies. So, even though they are physically alive, they are dead spiritually. That's why all unbelievers who don't know Jesus, though they are alive physically, they are spiritually dead. That's why Paul in Ephesians 2 says, when we were dead in sins and trespasses, we were alive physically, but we were dead. Why? Because we were not in subjection to the Father of spirits. In Timothy, Paul says, She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Meaning, while she's alive physically, she's actually dead in spirit. Why? She is not in subjection unto the Father of spirits. So, not everybody you see who's walking around is really alive. Yet, yeah, they are alive in the physical, but in the spirit, they are dead. Unless a man or woman is in subjection unto the father of spirits, they are not really alive. So when you and I subject ourselves to the father of spirits, to God, that is our access to life. That's how we know we are really alive. If you don't subject your life to the father of spirits, to God Almighty, it means you have robbed your, yourself of the right to be alive. You are alive in the physical, but in the spirit, you are dead. You are dead. Why? Because God is the father of spirits. Father of spirits. 
John 4, 24. Not only is God a spirit, he's the father of spirits. So in this, in this God's dimension of the spiritual world, God the Father is the head of that dimension. In that dimension is Jesus. Hebrews 12 gives us a picture of, of some members of God's spiritual realm, where God is the head. In that realm, Hebrews 12 from verse 24 tells us about God, the, the judge of all it's in that realm. The spirits of just men made perfect is in that realm. Angels are in that realm. Jesus, the Son of God, is in that realm. The blood of sprinkling is in that realm. And to Jesus, let's start from verse 22, please. Hebrews 12, 22. I'm saying that in this realm of the spirit where God is, and God is a spirit, in this realm where God dwells, in this realm of the spirit world, we have some members of that realm de declared in this scripture by Paul through the Holy Spirit. But you are come unto my Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. That's the headquarter of God's dimension of the spirit world. And to an innumerable, innumerable company of angels. Angels we can't number. Verse 23. And to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to the judge, God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. 24. These are members of God's realm of the spirit. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than ever. So this God's realm of the spirit world, these are some of the members of that dimension of God's realm of the spirit world. Remember, remember what we are saying? We are saying that there are two realms of existence. The physical world, what we can see, our hands can touch, our, our cars, our homes, our televisions, our wristwatches, this drum set, the chair, physical realm. And there is the spiritual realm we cannot see. And that realm is in two, two compartments. There is God's realm, which we just read about. And then now there's also the devil's realm. The devil is also a spirit in that spiritual realm. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 gives us an insight into this truth. Ephesians 2 verse 2. Glory to God. So in, 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 in the other realm of the spiritual world, there is the devil and his spirits, and the devil himself is also a spirit. Ephesians 2 verse 2, wherein in time past you walk, the efficient believers who are now believers, wherein in time past when you were not born again yet, he says you walked according to the course or arrangement of this word, According to the prince or the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. He calls the devil there the spirit. So he is the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. In every unbeliever, the devil is the one working in them. They are the seeds of disobedience. He says it, the one working in them is, is the spirit. Is the spirit, is the spirit. So the devil, who is also a spirit, he is the he has his own dimension of the spirit world. In his realm of the spirit world, the devil is the head of that kingdom. And then he has several types of spirits that work with him. And all the spirits in his realm are called evil spirits. Why? Because they are evil, they are bad. They are bad. Among the evil spirits are principalities and powers. That's, that's of this world, we get spirits in heavenly places. There are demons, there are fallen angels. There are demons, are actually disembodied spirits. And then there are fallen angels, which are not disembodied. They still have their bodies. That's why fallen angels don't possess people, because they have their own uh, heavenly bodies they have in them. Uh, demons are the ones that possess people. They need human body to express themselves on the earth, so they possess people. Those are disembodied spirits. But all of them in that, in that uh, realm, they are called evil spirits because they are spirits that do evil. They are called evil. They are spirits that do evil. All they do is evil. None of them do good. 
they are all evil spirits. There are different class of evil spirits, but all of them in that realm, they are called evil spirits because that's what they do. They do evil. They call evil spirits. That's their work. Evil spirits. Now, we are dealing today, teach, learning about the angels of God. The angels of God, they are, they are in, in God's di dimension of the spirit world. And we know evil spirits are in the devil's dimension of the spirit world. We need to find out more about this ministry angels of God that we are studying today. This is just the beginning of these studies. And please listen closely, listen closely, uh, and, and hear what the Lord is trying to reveal to us today about these spirits. So before we're going to learn about the angels of God, which are part of the spirits in God's dimension, human beings are actually also spirits, but enclosed in physical bodies. Are you still here? See, I hear you. So, so uh, God is a spirit. The devil is a spirit. Human beings are also spirits, but we are spirits enclosed in physical bodies so we can dwell on the earth. While the earth is physical. So we have, God gave us a physical body so we can be able to be licensed and authorized to dwell and inhabit the earth. So we are told in Psalms, God gave the earth to men. Why? Because God gave men physical bodies that gives us the authority to dwell in the physical realm. Satan has no right on the earth because he, he is a spirit. God has no right on the earth because God is a spirit. So both God and Satan need human access, human bodies to give them legal access into the earth. That's why when Christ was to come to die for us, he had to take a human body to have legal access into the earth. That's why for Satan to become the God of this world, he had to use Adam and Eve to give him legal access into the earth to rule over the earth. Because the earth is physical, made by the spiritual God for physical humans. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, Paul says this concerning us as human beings. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, he says, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul is saying that we as humans, we, we, we have spirit, soul, and body. And I pray that God will preserve your spirit, preserve your soul and your body blameless until he comes. So in this scripture, Paul reveals to us the trinity of the human personality. And some folks have been arguing, I see theologians, you know, arguing that there's no trinity. You know, there's only one God. Of course, there's only one God. And this God is just God the Father. Jesus Christ is not really almighty God. Christ was created. Holy Spirit is not God. You know, some say, well, well, you know, uh, God, God is one person, you know. At times he appears as the Father. At times appears as the Son. Apparently appears as the Holy Spirit. See, I taught here sometime ago, I don't know if you listen to that message, on the ministry of a teacher. Part of the ministry of the teacher is to teach the church doctrine. Doctrine are sets of belief systems. So the teacher helps the, the church to learn doctrine that the church may be strong and mature in God without, become, without staying as babies, easily swayed back and forth by every wind of doctrine. This one said that, oh, this one said that, oh. Anybody who is swayed like that has not sat under the ministry of a teacher. A teacher is an, a ministry gift in the body of Christ. Remember Ephesians 4, 11, and he gives some apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers. So the teaching ministry is an anointed office that Christ put within the church. M many times, folks used to think that the teaching ministry in Ephesians 4, 11 uh, is, is a ministry that has to do with studying. When you read and read and read, you can teach. That's not the case at all. It's not an, an academic office. Are you still here? Say, I hear you. Is a spiritual office, just like the face of an apostle. 
you never want an apostle because you have read books or because you have uh, you have uh, studied. No, no, no. You you receive that of it because God gives it to you. So the office of a teacher is not dependent on how much Greek you know, how much Hebrew you know. No. I've seen many folks today in the body of Christ who are teaching, they are using Greek. It's good to use Greek, to use Hebrew, which are the original text of the scriptures. Old covenant was in Hebrew and Aramaic. New covenant is, was, is in Greek. So those languages help you to have some broader perspective of the translations in English. However, however, we don't need Hebrew and, and, uh, and Greek to work in the office of a teacher. I used to hear. The office of a teacher is a te it's an office by an anointing. An anointing. This anointing enables the teacher to be able to put the little finger into your ear, so to speak. It's able to give you the, the knowledge of God. Isaiah says, precept upon precept, line upon line, a little here, a little there. That's the office of a teacher. Okay, let me not go there tonight. So this scripture says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we, human beings, are also spirits. God is a spirit. The devil is a spirit. We are spirits, but we are physical bodies. That entitles you and me to be, to live in two worlds at the same time. Are you still here? So human beings can be in two realms at the same time. That's why the human beings who are witches... They are asleep on their bed at home. They are also in the spirit somewhere in Jamaica, attending coven meetings. Why? Because man is spirit, soul, and body. He can be physical in the physical realm and also be available in the spiritual realm at the same time. When you dream, what happens to you? When you dream, many times, your spirit is somewhere else. Your soul is somewhere else, but you are there in the physical realm. And it's so real that when you wake up at times, what you are feeling in that realm happens to you in the physical realm. Why? Because that's the complexity of the human being. The humans are spirits, soul, and body. So we dwell in two different worlds. That's why Christ said in the book of John, I, I said, he was talking to, to uh, Nicodemus, said, I, Jesus said, I am the son of man who is in heaven while he was here on the earth. He was on earth saying, I'm in heaven. Ephesians chapter 2 tells us so that you and I, we have been raised with Christ, seated with him in heaven, and we are here in the, on the earth physically. So human beings, we are such fantastic beings that God made us like that. When God said, let's make mine in our image after our likeness, that image and likeness is clearly depicted in spirit, soul, and body. How? Because God is the Father the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And he made us spirit, soul, and body. On purpose. On purpose. On purpose. I was sharing some, some theologians. They were debating uh, on, on, on YouTube. Debating about if, whether God, whether Jesus Christ is almighty God or not, like God the Father is. And one said, he is almighty God like the Father. One said, no. It was made, created by the Father. These are theologians now. I know theology at times can make folks crazy. Theology can just twist, twist things, make people to, to begin to, to follow uh, scriptures without following the Holy Spirit. It can be a problem. I'm a theologian, but I find that theology at times is a problem. So I want to explain God out of God's word, you know, with their so-called knowledge. They can have, I don't care how many PhDs they have. Kenneth Hagin said, well, after many years of ministry and hearing people talk and hearing, I have decided that PhD means post hole digger. <laughs> post, post hole digger. <laughs> because I'm a PhD, but they can't reason. PhD, but they are, not, they are saying absolute nonsense, which does not align with common sense with scripture. And the PhD behind there, they say post hole digger. They call them post hole digger. <laughs> now, so somebody asked the panelist a question. He asked this fellow, this fellow who was saying that Jesus Christ is, is not like God the Father. He was created. This fellow said, how about when the Bible says, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Why did he say let us? Who are the us? So in replying to the question, the, the, the theologian said, you know, when God said let us, 
uh, God was telling everybody in his camps, including the angels, let us make man in our image. But God ended up doing the job by himself. He gave an illustration. He says, like, when, when you're with your the family gather in a, in a family gathering, grandma said, okay, let's now, let, let, let's make cake right now. Let's make cake. But she ends up making the cake alone. They don't all do it, but she does it. But he said, let us make cake. I said, well, that doesn't make sense. So the other uh, theologian who was arguing with him on the biblical aspect, I was thinking he would remember a scripture. He didn't remember to use that scripture for him. The scripture is very, very clear that he would have used. He forgot to use that scripture. The this guy is very sound, man. But he forgot the scripture. It's in Job. So what that tells you, first one was implying that the father is God, is the one who made Adam and Eve. But in the book of Job, Elihu said, the spirit of God has made me. So the Holy Ghost is involved in creation. The Holy Spirit has made me. And in John 1, he said, without the word Jesus, there was nothing made that was made. So Jesus Christ created all things. And in Job, he says, the Holy Spirit has created me. Which means it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, that is the us in let us. It doesn't involve the angels. No, it's the Godhead that is the us. It's the us. So Almighty God, Almighty God is a spirit, the devil is a spirit, and we are also spirits in human bodies. Now, talking about the angels, mm, somebody say, mm, <laughs> Hallelujah, I'm enjoying this. Glory to God. Now, the Almighty God in His wisdom assigns an angel to every baby born into this world. Once a baby is born, the Almighty God assigns an angel with that baby once they are born. Okay, so where was baby before the baby was born? Baby was somewhere in the mind of God in way back eternity. From the mind of God, God conceives us and then implants us into a woman's womb. And then, I mean, through the husband, the baby enters, come from God, the woman's womb. When the, woman, when the baby is born, the God has sent an angel to that baby that is with that baby from the moment the baby is in the womb to when the baby is born. How do we know that? In Matthew chapter 18, verse 10, look at what Jesus said. Matthew 18, the 10th verse. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Matthew 18, 10. This is what Jesus said. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones, little children. For I say unto you that in heaven, they are angels, do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. So Jesus says, don't despise these little babies. No, don't, don't look down on them. Because in heaven, they are angels. They are angels. So we means they have angels. So all the babies, the little ones, they have angels. When did they get the angels? We're not told when they got the angels, but we know they have angels. So little children, they have angels. So I believe it's, it's when God is conceiving them in his mind, he ascends an angel to them. So once they enter the mother's womb, once they are born, before they are born, the angel is there with the mother. And once they are born, the angel begins to follow them throughout life. And now, because you have gone, you have become old, does not make you make, make you to lose your angel. Your angel is with you throughout your earthly life. Now, if you believe in Christ, become born again. Then the angel is very comfortable to lead you and help you in the things of God. But some of those who refuse to accept Christ, the angel will go around with them until they die. When they die, the angel goes back to heaven and they go to hell. They are lost. But as long as they are alive, the angel is with them. Because God assigns the angel to them. So there, are, there is at least one angel with every human being on earth. Every human being on earth. God assigns these angels. And these angels are not baby angels. No man those things you see, you know. Baby angels flying around in heaven. Baby angels will be. No, no, no. It didn't say they are baby angels. They are angels assigned to the babies. Does not mean they are baby angels. Have you seen baby angels before? I have seen baby angels, you know, in TV, drawing, some carvings, little, little babies flying as angels. No, 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 no. They are not like that. <laughs> 
You know, angels don't grow. Angels are created angels. They are created full grown. You know, just like Adam. When Adam was created, Adam didn't grow. Adam was created full grown. You know, but Christ was born. He had to grow as a baby. But angels are like that, full grown. So there's no baby angel. Those things are just uh, people's imaginations. Don't mind those stuff. So angels are full grown. So, but every baby that comes to this world, we know from Matthew 18, 10, God assigns an angel to them. Angel to them. Generally speaking, the Bible gives us a definition of angels. He says angels are ministering spirits sent by God to minister for believers. I will emphasize this and then I will conclude for tonight. We'll pick it up from next Monday. There's a lot I'm going to share with us on this. Are you enjoying this so far? Beautiful, beautiful. And so the yes I call in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, we see what the, what the Holy Spirit spoke to us through Apostle Paul as to who angels are. Before that, he was talking about Jesus, who is the Son of God. Then he now went to verse 14 of Hebrews 1, concerning angels. He said, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So, Paul, by the Holy Ghost, tells us that the angels... Now, let, let's convince ourselves he's talking about angels. So, let's do verse 13 first. Give us verse 13, please. Verse 13 will let, let us know that he's talking about the angels. The they there is angels. We know, but let's just convince ourselves one more time. Hebrews 1 verse 13. So, the they there is talking about angels. Glory to God. But to which of the angels said he at any time, that's God, sit on my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? To which of the angels? So to the angels, God didn't say, sit at my right hand. He says so only to Jesus in Psalm 110 verse 1. Now, so verse 14 now. So, but they and they, these angels, are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for, say for. Say four. Now it's important he didn't say two. If he said two, it's made from four. You know, it didn't say there are many spirits sent to minister to the heirs of salvation. Now, heirs of salvation there meaning means you and I, means those who are saved by the blood of Jesus, who are heirs of God's redemptive mercies. We are born again. We are the ones in reference there, the believers. So the, the ministry angels are sent forth to minister for them who shall be the heirs of salvation, not to them who shall be heirs of salvation. Difference? I tell you difference. You say minister to, it means that they are sent to just go and give them something. Just minister to them. Just, just give this to them. Uh, it's, it's, it's like, it's like uh, somebody is in need. I tell you, I, I tell you go and Give him this. This is what he needs to take off of what he's going through. So I send you to him to go and give him what he needs. But in this case, they are sent to minister for. Say for. Good. For them who shall be heirs of salvation. This is a big thing that believers need to understand. And now the ministry, angels are called ministering spirits. They are not just called spirits, but ministering spirits. The word ministering is in the present continuous tense, meaning they are ministering. Ministering. What does, what does it mean to be ministering? Ministering means in the Greek structure of that verse, it means learning of somebody's need and attending to that need. That's ministering. It means learning of somebody's need and attending to that need. That's ministering. That's ministering. Just like a waitress does on you at the restaurant. You are at the restaurant, you are, you are eating, and the waitress will come by from time to time to check on you. They say, I hope you are, you are enjoying your meal. So, yeah, I'm enjoying your meal. Thank you very much. So, good. They will go back. 
they will come again and, and look, put an eye on your cup of, co cup of coffee and see whether you still have some left or you are running low. You say, okay, I see. You need more coffee? More coffee? You say, yes, please. They'll go and bring more coffee and give me more coffee. So what the waitress is doing, the waitress is ministering for you, not just to you. Because ministering for you because you have a role to play in what they can do to you and for you in a the restaurant. They can't just come and just give you things you didn't ask for. If they come, they ask you first, do you want more of this? Say yes, then they give you. Do you want more of this? Yes, they give you. They can't just come and bring things and be partly on your table like that. You will ask them, what's the matter with you? I didn't ask for that. I don't want that. That's not in my, in my budget. No. So, so angels of God, they, are, they work like waitress and, and, and waiters in restaurants. So ministering spirits mean they learn about our needs from the Holy Spirit and attend to our needs by the Holy Spirit. Ministering spirits. And they do this for those who are heads of salvation. So angels, uh, uh, like I said, that you have grown up does not mean you have lost your angels. When you get born again, guess what? The angels are very happy. That's why Jesus Christ says, there is joy among the angels when one soul gets saved. You know why? Because once a soul gets saved, the angels' work becomes easier. The angels say, wow, my work just got easier. My work just got easier. And that we say, since they got born again, they, 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 they have been a mess. So before they got born again, they have been a mess. Since childhood, they have been doing all sorts of bad stuff. They are not following God. Now they are born again. Woo! My job will be easy going forward now that they are born again. So angels rejoice when one sinner gets saved because that makes their job easier. Now they are not, now the Spirit of God comes upon the believer and become born again. Now they can hear in the Spirit. They can sense the Holy Spirit. They can hear the voice of God. They now fall in love with the Word of God. They now go to church. They go to where the angels are comfortable at going forward. The angels are happy about it. About it. So the angels of God, they are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for us who are heirs of salvation. That means we who are in Christ Jesus, we are never alone. We have angels with us who are cooperating with us to fulfill God's plan for our lives. As believers, yes. And when two believers gather, at least two angels just showed up. At least two angels just showed up. And now, the angels don't show up everywhere. But if people go to baptism, the angels stay outside. I, I can tell you that. There are some places some people go, the angels won't go in. They just say, no, I, I can't go there. Just, just stay away. Stay away. When they, they come out, okay, okay, they begin to follow them again, see if they can help them. But when, when believers gather together around the name of Jesus, the angels are happy because they are gathered around their master's name and they are comfortable, they are happy, their presence become more tangible in that place. Praise God. This is why it's very vital to go to church, very vital to go to church. Uh, because apart from humans gathering, angels are also gathering. Yeah. And yes, I also got it. Because the believers, because their believers are following God, the angels, mark what it says, they are sent forth to minister for them who are heirs of salvation, not for sinners. The sinners who are not saved, yes, when they were born, God assigned an angel to them. But because they are not born again, the angel cannot do his work in their life the way he wants to do it. The angel cannot fulfill God's plan for them until they become born again. When they now become born again, then the angel becomes unleashed to minister for them. For them. In God's sovereign love and kindness, he can send his angel to deliver those who are not even born again. To even save them. I remember the story. Can I take get to the story of his encounter with Jesus when the Lord revealed to him the angel of God with him. The Lord said to him that this angel, have, he said, my angel has been with you since you were born. He said, this is my, my, but my angel, I've delivered you. The devil tried to kill you when you were very young, but my angel delivered you from that. I said, my angel will save you from that problem. He wasn't born again yet. So sovereignly, God does that. 
Now, maybe next week or so, I'll share with you some instances of the angels of God delivering people. That's part of their work, especially those who are believers. And I will share with you my encounter with angels over the years. Over the years. Oh, it's life-changing. My it's just, it's powerful. It's wonderful, wonderful. And then... Uh, and also, how I've been taught some things by angels, and so on and so forth. It's a lot of things I want to share with us in this series. But the angels of God are real ministering spirits sent forth to minister for us who are heads of salvation. I want to pray at this time and thank God for the ministry of his angels. And let God know we are thankful that his angels are with us to minister for us as heads of salvation. We thank God for his angels. Let's, can we please stand and just appreciate the Lord. Say, Lord, I thank you that I am saved. I'm a child of God and your angels are working with me. I thank you, Father, for you have sent forth your angel to minister for me as a heir of salvation. Father, thank you. Just thank him from the depth of your heart. Thank you for the depth of your heart that his angels are, are with you, ministering for you as the head of salvation. So you are never you are never really alone as a child of God. You may think you are alone. No, no. The angel of God is there with you. Praise God. The Lord has sent forth his angel to minister for you as a head of salvation. Praise God. The demons may be all around, but better still, the angels are with us. Glory to God. They that be with us are more than they that be against us. Oh, man, we got good company. Glory to God. We got good company. Praise God. The angels of God are with us. The angels of God are with us. Thank you, Father, for your holy angels. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Let's really thank him for the gift of his holy angels. Oh, God, we thank you for your holy angels. Lord God, we thank you for your angels you have sent, oh God, to minister for us as heirs of salvation. We thank you, Father. We are never by ourselves. Oh, we give you glory. We give you honor that your angels with us, they find out our needs and they meet those needs by the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus. How we thank you. How we thank you. How we thank you. Glory to God. The angels of God are with us. Praise God in the highest. Wow. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Rabba Shadeli Soramanga. Ekome Zife Zilaga. Mevike Zoridongo Visondo. Ikima Sekoma Vilebo. Ikabababa Shefina Minio. Ila bra bra na, ifelio seligide, eme kwalabash, ekino storo, vedo se profine nigo, mengo siliba, fiero ililoge. Paul talks about the tongues of angels. Lenteli meno. Ivila Meko Sire Benvenemi Silogo Penclos Paride Menio Seneva. At times like this, we speak the tongues of angels. We communicate in angelic languages. Glory to God. Imala Balabalaba Efinemino. Petoso filesila. Just speak in tongues as much as you can right now. Let's communicate in angelic languages. Abilo. Ime felis terebe. Men close sabia mina. Fete nemine ko. Jivriaba so minegine. Ilovoros. Connecim pravinga ida la balo menso felici clemaga dila efiteri me che ma vino vini mio sali gila bamba la bamba wonderful father thank you tonight for the gift of your angels 
We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. In the name of Jesus, help all of us from tonight to be more conscious of your angels with us. Help us, Lord, to be more conscious of these heavenly beings that you have sent to minister for us as heirs of salvation. Blessed be your name. I feel we should just worship the king even a little bit more. Magnify the king a little bit more. Lord, I praise your name. Jesus, I worship you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for your holy angels. Thank you, wonderful Jesus. Solo felili kiabrano. Veni mi esule cabino. Vemi sule frane calaba. Thank you for the gift of your angels. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, for the gift of your angels. Oh, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you praise. You give them charge over us. Hallelujah. To keep us in all our ways. Glory to God. Blessed be your name, Father. We rejoice in you, Jesus. We celebrate you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. You are the king of the angels. We thank you, Lord, for sending your angels to us. Praise God. Woo, glory. Blessed be your name, Father. Thank you, Lord. As we go home tonight, Lord, we ask that your presence become more and more real to us. In this series, give us angelic encounters. Let everyone in this school, this season, have angelic encounters from the Holy Spirit. I ask it in faith and believing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to walk in alignment with your purpose and plan that will make the angels work easy. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Please, you may be seated. We have to make the angels work easy. You know, in the Old Testament, God told Moses, you guys be careful. For my angel with you, that guy does not take nonsense. If you mess up, he will deal with you. God told Moses that. That angel won't forgive you. God told Moses, that angel I sent with you, that angel is, a, that angel is serious, takes no nonsense. If you mess up, that guy won't forgive you. He will take care of you guys. There were times when the angel killed many of them in the camp because of their sin against God. So that, as I'm saying, God help us to cooperate with you to make the angels work easy. The angel camp. Now, some people, their angels are very idle. Some believers, their angels are almost Oh, where this this fellow, my God. Someone that the angels are, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Oh, glory to God, let's go there, let's go there, let's go there. And then, as we continue this series, our angels are going to be very happy, it's going to be very excited. I tell you what, the angels are happy when we talk about them. The angels God gave you, angels, your angels, I mean, they, are, they are smiling now. We are talking about them. Concerning the word of God. They, they like that. They like that. They like it. That's why God, God impressed on me to just teach this, this this time. The Holy Spirit is amazing. It's amazing. Praise God forever. As we close the school tonight, I want to remind us that this weekend is a special weekend. This weekend, we are having a conference beginning Friday. The living, purposeful living. We have a guest from Nigeria. Dr. Bello will be here to teach us something about productivity, about purposeful living on Saturday and Sunday conference. So I want us to do our best to be here. Invite folks to come be a part of it. And then on Sunday will be a special miracle service crowned with Pastor Lina's birthday. Birthday. Uh, she is going to be uh, 15 years old by Sunday. F 15 years old by Sunday. <laughs> you can see there. So she's giving away uh, $59 to mark her 59 years of birthday. You know, one dollar for a year. One dollar for a year. To be doing that in gifts to encourage people. So help me to invite as many folks as you can 
to join us as a church family to celebrate our senior pastor this Sunday. All right. You are watching High Definition in Broadcasting Gospel Songs Christian Movies Messages Crusaders Children programs. Do at a card. Agar Kudavan hi Kudahe. At Bright Star TV. Najat Kapegan. Bright Star TV presents all the Christian programs. Like Urdu Gospel Songs, Punjabi Gospel Songs. English Gospel Songs Dramas Movies Discussions Reality Shows Messages Crusades Sunday School Programs And many more Keep watching Bright Star TV